Shawnee Kennedy. I went to CSUN here from 2010 to 2015. I was a music education major and a clarinet performance dual major, so I did both at the same time. Um, how many of you in here are doing that? Okay, cool. Is that like palm okay. Okay, um, and how many of you are strictly music ed? Okay, awesome. Um, so, when I was going here, I literally tried to get involved with as much as possible because I wanted, you know, the full, well-rounded experience that I was going to have to teach um, eventually to the kids. So everything that I did was always with that teaching aspect in mind, um, even things that seemed way off. Uh, one of the things, one of the things that I did is I competed for the Miss America pageant for Miss California. I was Miss Malibu Coast, Miss California Icon in 2014. Um, and Miss Hollywood, and with all those things, um, I wanted to gather those skills that I learned from marketing and um, all this different type of advertisement and stuff, so that my band program wouldn't have to struggle um, with the band boosters of, come on guys, like, we need two dollars, give me your money, type of thing. <laughs> um, I really wanted to be able to have um, the band and orchestra program kind of run like a business would. Um, so I really took advantage of everything that I could really get my hands into here at CSUN. So if you're doing both majors, you're doing performance and ed, I would encourage you to not um, think of it as two different things, like, oh, now i got to put on this hat, and then, oh, i got to do this. Just try to blend them together and do both at the same time. So <clears throat> when I was doing the pageants, um, a lot of the things that I got to do was promote my, my platform, which was Keeping quality music and education, uh, keeping quality music in California schools and the importance of music education. So I really wanted, anytime I would go somewhere, I would ask, like, oh, is it okay if I perform? And they say, sure. And so I play my clarinet, usually Rhapsody in Blue, because that's what everyone does. <laughs> um, and then I talk about why music's important and why I needed to be um, a core subject in the schools. Um, for three years, I was asked to go to Music Advocacy Day in Sacramento. Um, with um, uh, the president at the time of NAFME and we met with NAM and everyone and for the whole day in Sacramento we were just going around to all these different lobbyists and literally seeing these people who make the laws um, try to change them for music education and say, hey, you know, um, a lot of these schools in California, they don't have their standards rewritten and it hasn't been done in 14 years you mind taking a look at this? And they would be like, oh yeah. Uh, through that I learned that a lot of politicians used to play clarinet. <laughs> so they're not opposed to um, helping out music education, it's just not talked about enough in their offices. So it gets pretty much pushed back on the back burner, they just don't know about it. So the more awareness that you can bring um, to literally any of your classes, even if you're doing like, I don't know, math ideas or you know, some anthropology class. One thing I did when I was here was I never took a class, music or non-music uh, related, that I didn't somehow sneak music into there. So if we were doing like a history lesson or something, I'd look up, okay, what music was happening during this time? I'd go and I'd talk to um, the music history teacher and be like, hey, I'm learning this really boring stuff in history. Do you know like what the, you know, Beyonce of the 1800s were? And she'd be like, oh yeah, here. <laughs> and so that's what I would talk about. So um, any subject that you can literally tie into, into music or <coughs> if you're a singer, your you know, profession, that would be you know, a, an advantage to you. Um, one of the things that I do now is I teach full-time at Bishop Alamany High School, which is just down the way on uh, in Mission Hills. Um, and their previous band director was there for 10 years. Out of the blue, she just decided to retire over an email, and so my brother was working there for two years as a drumline instructor, and they were like, hey, do you know anyone who can um, you know, fill this position? We're gonna start interviewing candidates. If you know of anyone, just let us know. And he was like, well, actually, my <laughs> sister has a master's. And so, um, so that day I got an email. <coughs> I sent in my resume and everything. The next um, couple days I got an interview and then they were like, we're not letting you leave here until you sign the contract. And I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I signed the contract and that was that. Um, but that really taught me that success is when opportunity and preparation meet. 
okay, those type of opportunities, yeah, they'll come up, but if you're not ready for them, it's kind of on you. It's like if you're, you know, you get called to play in the NBA right now, are you gonna be like, oh yeah, I'll be there? <laughs> or are you gonna be like, um, actually I'm not really prepared, that's not really my skill set. <laughs> so while you're here, kind of identify your weakest spots and just work on improving those, if that makes sense. So if you're a singer and you have no experience in strings and band or percussion instrument, get into those ensembles where you can learn those things. This is the most time that you will ever have in your life. I know it sounds really like, no, I'm like super busy. I have this and this and this. I plan my day hour by hour, minute by minute. I even schedule my bathroom breaks. Like, <laughs> I know it seems like you have no time, but literally, this is the most time you have. I know some of you work as well, but when you're actually in the work field, you don't have time for anything else other than that job, if that makes sense. Um, so really be kind of selfish right now. Take advantage of all the opportunities you have, make the most of them, um, and just try to do as much as you can. Say yes to everything, um, but also <coughs> put yourself first. So know what your limit is and know, well, if I don't get to do everything now, I can do everything maybe a little bit later. You have your whole life, right? Um, uh, another thing I learned while I was here at CSUN is that people are your greatest resource. So get really comfortable with, you know, picking your teacher's brains, your professors. Um, if you have time to go to one of their office hours, just shoot them an email and be like, hey, like, I really enjoy your teaching style and everything like that. I just wanted to know if I could have a quick chat with you to, you know, have a quick little interview. Um, when I was here, Dr. Schwinkel was by far my favorite teacher. Um, he's such a teacher's teacher, you know. He loves to teach, he can be very serious and very strict on um, everything he does and it's always done with intention. Um, he doesn't randomly do stuff or, oh, I feel like doing this today, he's always prepared. Um, one day, well, a couple times actually, I pissed him off in a not good way. I thought I was being fine, but he saw it as a little sass and I felt so guilty. I was just like, oh no, like he hates me, this is not okay. Um, and so I went to his office and I was just like, I said exactly what I told you, like, just really like to interview you, you know, like, I really enjoy, like, your teaching style and I just want to be, if I could just have, like, 10% of your, you know, awesomeness, I would be so grateful. Um, and so he shared, like, <coughs> an, an entire hour of his life with me just telling me all about his career, his family life, and everything, and that was really inspirational to me and I was like, yeah, dude, like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. When I was in first grade, I knew I wanted to be a teacher, but only because I wanted a classroom. I wanted to decorate it. I was like, oh. <laughs> that was my first grade mind. But then as I um, grew up and I was drum major at my high school, I really loved marching band. I'd been doing it since I went to Nobel Middle School in seventh grade. Um, and it was always kind of like a dream of me and my brothers. Because he was four years younger than me, but now he's like four inches taller than me. Um, and he played percussion. We didn't get along at all. Like worse than the Batman and Joker. No, we weren't friends. Like we hated each other for some weird reason. But um, when I was in middle school, he was in third grade. And so I would like get my clarinet and run home and be like, hey, you should try this. This is so cool. He'd be like, no. <laughs> and so I'd come back with a saxophone and he'd be like, nope. And then one day we watched the movie Drumline and then he was just like, oh. <laughs> and he was hooked. Um, and so, <coughs> music is kind of like the thing that really brought our family together. We had, you know, we hated each other. It wasn't until we were both involved in music and in band that we really started becoming best friends. Um, and so, when we were kids, we were like, okay, dude, you grow up and I grow up, I'm gonna run the marching band, and then you're gonna do the drum line, and then we're just gonna be friends. <laughs> and so, this year that we're kind of getting started in doing that at Bishop Allen Amy, so that's been like a blessing. Um, and just everything will work out in your favor if you just trust and believe and have faith and work on what you're supposed to be doing when you're supposed to be doing it. So if someone's like, oh hey, I have this really cool party, but you know that you have a test coming up for one of your major classes, um, that's literally gonna be important to you. Um, I tell my students this all the time, how you do anything is how you do everything. Say that again. How you do anything is how you do everything. So 
you throw off one little thing like, ah, it's not a big deal. Remember, it's the little foxes that spoil the run. It's the little things that add up and eventually they become big things. So if you, you know, if you just take the time now to identify those little inadequacies that you may have, start working on building them up to get better and not be weaknesses, right? Think of, I don't know, who's your favorite anyone? Me? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Do you have, does anyone like sports? Yeah? Who's, what's your favorite team? Um, the name that shall never be spoken. And what's your call again? The 49ers. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one else said they like sports. Okay. So on, your, on the 49ers, who's your favorite player? I don't know his name right now. Okay. Let's say your favorite team was the Raiders. <laughs> and your favorite player was Derek Carr, um, who's the quarterback. Let's just say that's who it was. <coughs> okay, so as um, Derek Carr does anything, he doesn't do it just kind of half or whatever. It, he's the one after the game where if something didn't go right, he's obviously the quarterback, so he has to be on the front line of the camera people being yelled at and being like, well, you kind of sucked at this. How do you feel about that? And, you know, as a band director or orchestra director, you're the person standing in front of everyone in the class. So they're kind of looking to you as, you know, the know-it-all. Um, so you have to be kind of like relaxed in that you don't have to feel, <coughs> oh, well, I, I didn't really know this when I was studying that. But let's pretend you went 10 years ahead of time you're standing in front of the classroom, some kid asks you a question, you're not too sure, this is the time to be sure, to figure that out, to find out, hmm, okay, what might someone ask me that I'm not really too confident on? Because if you think if you won't get asked, you will get asked. So my um, advice to you would be just write everything down, your pencil, your pen, and a notepad, that's gonna be your best friend. Any handouts you get in your methods classes, Keep those in the books. Do you guys still do the resource notebooks? Okay, oh, don't yeah. lose those. <laughs> and if you're if you have you know a choir teacher, make sure you get those back from them because sometimes you won't. Um, <laughs> but make sure you have them. <coughs> How's that? I'm speaking for him. Make sure you get those back because you might think, oh no, I'm not gonna like. I thought they. I remember the first day I was here with Mary Schlitz. They asked. Um, so uh, how many of you want to teach high school? And I was like, oh yeah, that's me. And then they're like, okay, elementary school, and then raise their hand, because that's not what I really wanted. It would have been cool, but no. And then they were like, oh, who wants to do middle school? I definitely wasn't raising my hand for that. Uh, and then, you know, a position opened up for me to teach at five elementary schools, and I needed money. So I said, <laughs> yeah, I'll be there. And um, I learned a lot from that. I learned exactly how to explain something in the smallest, teeniest, insy bittiest way that you would think, well, well, duh, of course, to, to breathe, you just snuck in through your nose and just exhale, and to walk, you just put one foot in front of the other. It seems so like obvious and like duh to us, but for little kids, it's like, huh? Like, what, what? No one ever said this. So, you know, anytime you can get any experience in your general music classes, soak it in. Um, string methods, soak it in. Um, back to me saying that people are your greatest resource. <coughs> your teachers here, you should be like, if we were still in MySpace days, they should be in your top five. Literally, <laughs> they gotta be right there. You gotta have them literally in your phone, in your um, contacts, or hey. Because when you leave here, a lot of people don't stay in contact with them. So you don't have to think about, like, oh, they're probably really busy. Like, yeah, they're really busy. but. They really do like when you come back and talk to them. Even if it's just a small success to you, to them, it's like, yes, okay. Something I said stuck in their head and you know, they're able to you know, act on it and actually achieve it. And then you know, when you give, you give back. Um, okay, so there's three things that when you get a school, you really want to um, make sure you do. The first is be super friendly with your administration. Um, principals, um, the office staff, all the way to <coughs> sorry, the janitors, okay? 
Um, make sure you're really awesome and nice to the administration because they literally can put the hammer down and say, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that. Um, teaching at the five elementary schools, I was really lucky that um, all of the principals were really eager and really happy to let me do things. Um, but since I was working at a school district where they already had um, uh, sh established string classes where you could be in third grade to fifth grade and learn how to do string instrument and then in fourth grade and fifth grade you can do band. So the string teachers kind of had <coughs> an advantage over everyone else because they already had the kids a whole year before band could even get their hands on them. In choir you just have them like from first grade all the way to fifth grade because you, know, you don't need hands to sing. Um, but yeah and so um, that taught me like okay being really nice to the <coughs> to the school principals, you know, like, oh, as soon as you go in, oh, you know, when's your birthday? And then having the kids learn happy birthday, literally schlopping the kids over to the office and having them play happy birthday. You know, it's just mm -hmm. little things that no one else is going to do. The English teachers aren't going to do that, right? The math teachers are like, oh, we just need an equation of your birthday. And that, that's not going to So you, as a music teacher, you really have an advantage. Everyone loves music. I don't think anyone's like, oh, I hate music. Um, besides the Grinch, maybe. Um, but we are, we're human beings. It's a part of who we are. Our first thing when we wake up, usually our alarm's got music on it. But if you think about the single most, you know, craziest invention that really brought, I think, mankind together was from Steve Jobs, the iPad, or iPod. That completely revolutionized everything that we do. Um, you know, we turn on the radio. We're kind of uncomfortable with silence. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't last very long, right? So, you know, we kind of have to use that to our advantage. Um, <coughs> if a lot of you, how many of you have taken sociology? Okay, if you haven't, I would encourage you to take it um, if you need it for your, um, you know, your regular credits. Um, definitely take it. It shows you a lot about how people behave in groups. And guess what? As a teacher, unless you've just got one kid in the class, you're going to be in groups. Um, it's really important to know group dynamic, read um, different people's body languages, um, and be able to respond in kind. Um, the second thing, after um, the relationships you build with everyone on campus, is social media. So we live in a really cool time where you can actually use that to influence your band, um, orchestra, and choir programs at your school. Um, for high school, almost everybody is on social media. Um, so, <coughs> for my first year here at Alameda, I set up a band um, Instagram page. And I don't let a day go by where I'm not uploading at least three things on that Instagram page. Um, one of the things we do is we do um, little highlights and shout outs. So, each band member will get like a little interview every week um, on Fridays, and we'll just post it and be like, hey, here's a, you know, a cool band kit. Um, and that's mainly to invite other kids who think, like, oh, I don't know how to play an instrument. It's too late for me. My life is over. Um, that, no, actually, this person just picked up the trombone two days ago, and they can already play, you know, this slidey thing. I could be you. Um, just encouraging them to, you know, not be afraid to try new things. Um, but you really use social media to promote your program. Um, Oh yeah, and then um, make sure that you communicate with your parents. Um, so <coughs> a lot of the parents, at least at my school, they, they're adapt to email. My school, it's required that every student has an iPad, um, and their parents do too. Yeah, it sounds really crazy, but it's a thing. Um, yeah, so they all have um, their syllabus that's uploaded onto a thing called Canvas. It's kind of like Moodle or... Um, Oh, you use Canvas? Oh, excellent, perfect. So you'll be super well-versed. <coughs> but they use that. That was new to me this year, um, but it's super easy. Um, so all the syllabus go up on there. You communicate with the parents, all that stuff. Whenever they have a concert, it's straight up on there, emails, all that stuff. Um, so make sure you're always communicating with the parents about what's coming up. 
Um, so also be prepared as a director to fill literally all the roles that you thought you wouldn't have to do. Um, that includes you know being a fashion designer. Um, if you plan on having you know any sort of clothing for your organization, shirts, jackets. Um, <coughs> our school is sponsored by Adidas. So we have little things that we have to make for them: bags, um, hats, even socks, which is really weird. But yeah, all that stuff. Um, we have to be travel agents as um, directors. We have to, if you're going to be booking anything, you have to order the buses in advance. Um, no group discounts and ticket prices. One of the things, this is kind of a thick week for my school's uh, music program. Today we had um, Jordan Marchand, who's actually the, uh, she was a violinist here a few years ago. She also runs the CISA News Orchestra of Colorado mm -hmm. Street. She came and she talked to the string class today about um, just her career as a studio musician and everything they need to do, pretty much reminding them, hey, you gotta practice. It was like, just keep saying that louder. Mm -hmm. Tell them more. Um, but yeah, and so one of the things we did for her is <coughs> we advertised it on our Instagram, like Jordan Marchand's gonna come and put her bio um, right in the descri <coughs> description box. Send an email out to the parents. I let the faculty and staff know, like, hey, Hollywood Chamber Orchestra violinist Jordan Marchand's gonna be here today. So everyone's like, oh, okay, oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and so she came, everyone welcomed her. We like turned the lights down low, had her um, website up on the board. You know, she came in, everyone clapped, and it was great. And she gave her speech, and it was awesome. Um, <coughs> but you kind of have to be able to do pu um, public relations and customer service with whoever you're inviting over. Um, always remember that you're the head of the group. It's kind of like you're the president of whatever organization you're doing. You're the first thing they see, and then your students are a reflection of your values and your beliefs and everything like that. So make sure that you know who you are before you go in, and um, really look for opportunities now to better yourself so that when you're in those situations, it's very you know, point blank and obvious. Um, and lastly, <coughs> so being at, teaching at five elementary schools, I literally have to drive like at every single one with you know, t sometimes two to three hours gap within the one school to the next. And it was kind of frustrating because I didn't live close, it was in Conejo Valley, so if I were to come way, um, <coughs> way down here, I would have, you know, it would have been number one waste of gas because I would have had to turn around and go back. Um, but just kind of doing time management, um, knowing exactly how much you can fit in your, in the lulls of your day, um, and using that as like a prep time to um, get you know your other schools or other things that you need to take care of for yourself under control. Um, now at this school, it's a lot closer to my house. Um, you know, I get two prep periods to where I can actually go out and kind of. I don't like the word network networking, which a lot of people use. It's overused, um, but it's really just building relationships. So building relationships with the principal, with the other teachers on campus, letting them know like, oh hey, like. Um, my students really like enjoy your class. I just wanted to let you know, I just had to come meet you because they can't stop talking about you. Um, and then them being like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool, thanks. Um, people respond really well to flat flattery when it's genuine and not just you know, surface level fake, like, oh, I like your shoes. You know, <laughs> like, oh, okay, I don't know you, but thanks. You know? um, <laughs> I, I went and I said those exact things to an English teacher and she was like, oh wow, like, I would never know, the students never talk to me about like how much they like me, but thanks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. And then, like, if they're gonna benefit, you know, the kids that you're working with, they eventually, some of them wanna be rock stars. If you don't have that experience of playing in a, in a, like a small band, or if you don't have that experience of, you know, chamber music or managing things, you're not going to be as prepared as you should be to help them out with that. Um, and if you are, then you're obviously getting to know different people right now. So build your <coughs> network um, right here. The people in your class, those are the ones that are going to be with you. When I first got this job, it was like bing, bing, boom, it was right there. So 
So I was like, okay, I'm a high school band director now. I'm, I'm not teaching elementary school. I'm going to have to you know, go in there, clean up the room, see what the setup is like, <coughs> see what instruments work, which ones I'm gonna have to repair. All my relationships that I had here at CSUN, of all the people who had already <coughs> gotten high school jobs, I was, they, were, they were the ones who actually reached out to me like, hey, do you need anything? Like, congratulations, but if you need you know, extra music or if you need any instruments or you need contacts for this, um, they really stepped up to help me out. So all of the people that you meet here at CSUN really get to know them and kind of build those bonds and relationships so that later on you can help them out and they can help you out. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. So are there any questions? Yeah. Were you excited to uh, see so many people like this? Uh, so when I was um, doing Miss California, I was working with the Children's Miracle Network and going to the Children's Hospital in LA. Um, and then I also did some work with um, Camp Ronald McDonald, which was for kids with cancer. And so they did have um, drumming things for them because some of them were like different arms and legs. Um, so they weren't always able to. <coughs> and the job I'm at now, a lot of the disorders that some of the kids have are just kind of like mental disorders. Um, so they might have um, ADD, ADHD, um, but those kids, I'm like addicted to having them in my class. They, they really focus, for some reason in music, um, they don't get as distracted. They really want to be there, they really want to hit something. So if you get any of those kids, I would say percussion is great um, because they get to use their hands and they're like reading stuff at the same time. Um, but yeah, music I think is great for anyone with a disability. Have you ever worked with any bad kids? I haven't. I, when I was at UCLA, I had there was one girl who was blind, and she played flute. And that was really cool. Yeah, but I haven't had anyone, anyone who was deaf. That would be cool, maybe next year. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we talked was that you have to be adaptable and ready to take up change. Uh, what was the one that got you uh, the time uh, out of you? Well. So like I said, all the little things that I did when I was here at CSUN, I was, um, Mr. or John Rochino kind of took me under his wing, and I was like, I want to, I want to do orchestra conducting. He's like, well, you can do the CSUN Youth Orchestra, you know, experiment on them. And I was like, okay. So I did score study. I went and followed him literally anytime he had a rehearsal with an orchestra. I was right behind him, like my scores um, in the Thousand Oaks Philharmonic. Um, and a lot of the professors here, like, you do these things that I'm telling you, no one else is doing that, right? So if you go and you really make relationships with these people on anything that you're kind of weak on, they'll help you out. They're, gonna, they're not gonna be like, no, and then backhand you, right? They're gonna be like, yeah, okay, come. Um, so I was most nervous, I would say, <coughs> about teaching strings. When I got this job, um, it was, I had to teach beginning strings and advanced orchestra. Um, so I was like, Called, like what? like I remembered a little bit from methods classes and I was just like I was like so stupid and not really practicing the viola um, but luckily the beginning strings class really helped because you're literally step by step page one line one going over every single little thing so and you don't have to finish everything you know in like two minutes right you have like at least a full year to be able to teach all the beginning concepts. Um, so you would just really focus on just the <coughs> basic fundamentals, because if those kids can play you know, the first five notes and they're perfectly in tune, they have a good solid tone, they're excellent at basic rhythm, think of how much you know, more valuable that is than to just rush through it and be like, okay, you can kind of play can-can right now. Like you can't can. Okay. So, <laughs> so I, you know, that was probably the most scary thing. But I, I enjoy teaching strings so much. Like I thought I would not because I'm a total dandy. But strings is so fun. It's so awesome. Um, so yeah. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Some of the question was like jazz. Like I have like literally zero experience with jazz. Like mm -hmm. three jazz songs like ever in my life. Mm -hmm. Like how did you? Because you're your clarinet, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, what do you do to like instruct jazz if you do or anything like that? 
Well, I, when I was in high school, I did the Thelonious Monk Jazz Institute, and I played at the Chase Playboy Jazz Festival and all this stuff. So literally, I knew I wanted to be a teacher from a super young age, so literally every single thing I was doing, it was to be like, okay, well, I want to have a jazz program, I want to have a marching band program, I got to do that now. So I just wanted experience in it. Um, but at this school, they hadn't had a jazz band or a marching band in 10 years. So I'm kind of like the first one to bring all of that back. So I was just here uh, like three or four weeks ago and went up the stairs to Matt Harris and I was like, hey, I want to start a jazz band at my school. You probably don't remember me, but I was an alumni here and I just wanted to know if you had that CD from 2008. And he was like, oh yeah. And then he showed me like, oh yeah, you can take all of them. He just gave me all of his jazz CDs. And I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> um, and I would say you're, you're at a really good school for jazz. Like they're intense, yeah. they're so good. Um, so anytime you can just go in, I mean, they're super cool um, and really humble about their talent. And you could just go into that little room, I don't even rem remember what the room number is, and just sit there and just watch. Um, does Gary Fukushima still teach? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Take his jazz class. Yeah. He does Chop Monster and it's so easy. It's like, it's super fun too. So. In all of your methods, classes, write it down, especially the ones where you're like, I don't know anything about jazz. Like, write it down. Like, day one, what did he do? He told us hi. hi. <laughs> day two, he played a CD, play a CD. Like, literally, step by step, write everything down. It's not so much for you to learn how to play that thing, it's for you to learn how to teach that thing. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Morning, especially in primary school. Mm -hmm. And in high school, it's not required, but it has it must be offered. Yes. But it varies between schools in the same district. Do you know how? Why does the state code not enforce schools to have a certain level of music education? Why does it vary between? <coughs> well, when I went to Sacramento, they said, um, like I said, they just weren't aware that that was an issue. They have a bunch of stuff flying on their desk, most of which is just, well, I was paid to talk about this. So I'm going to talk about this and try to get your attention on it. Um, when I was there, they said that you know anything having to do with music education was a million dollars to fix. To them, you know what they call that? Budget dust. I don't know about you, but I could use a little budget dust. <laughs> so for them, a million dollars is nothing. They get tens of billions of dollars of bills, literal bills, coming on their desk about, okay, pass this, pass that, move this under here. They're politicians. I mean, what a scandal, right? Um, so all that stuff, they just need more awareness. As students here, um, this is like the top collegiate group, like so many years running. It's You're kind of like the ambassadors, the Avengers, to go out and literally talk in all of your basic classes that aren't music education about why music's important, why you do what you do, why you've committed um, your entire life, your profession, your vocation, your calling to exactly teaching and why it's so important, why it needs to be at those schools. Um, so a lot of it just is an awareness. So anytime you guys are able to do Music Advocacy Day, any of those types of events, just go and speak, go and at least listen or talk to other people. Um, they ju they're just not aware that it's an issue. I have a question. What is your class schedule? So my class schedule is super weird. It's like block schedule and normal. <coughs> so on Mondays and Fridays, um, it's one through six, and then Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, and then three, four, five, six, yeah. And then the first four days, you get out at 2.30, and then the last day, you get out at 1.35, and then they send us an email out every morning letting us know when there's a change in the schedule. <laughs> yeah. So that whole comment about being flexible and adaptable, <laughs> you have to be literally ready for anything. You can't complain. You can't be like, oh, what? I can't believe, oh my god. No. Like, they want someone who can just do it or, or not, right? Because there's so many people in this world who wish that they could, you know, have what you're saying. Whatever you're complaining about, there's someone in the world who's praying for that complaint. Like, I go to, my school is a private Catholic school. They have a lot of international students, a lot of those students 
um, in general just are rich. There's a kid literally there with a pink Maserati, right? If he has, <coughs> if he gets a flat tire or something, he's like, oh, I can't believe my pink Maserati has a flat tire. Curse this world. You know how many people would just be like, I have a pink Maserati. <laughs> you know? um, so whatever you're complaining about, someone wishes they could have that complaint. So I don't know, just, just be ready to do whatever. Yeah. I don't. I, when I was doing the five elementary schools, <coughs> they literally had um, all the wind instruments and percussion. So um, clarinet, flute, saxophone, trombone, trumpet, and like snare, bell, and bass. And that was it. So I didn't have to do recorder, thank God. Um, but if, if I got a, there was a job that they asked me to do that, but then it like didn't work out with my schedule, so I couldn't do it. Um, but if you could ask, literally money is money, right? So just be prepared to get one, have a book, whatever you need. Um, a lot of things with general music is they're really forgiving, right? They're just little kids. They just want to be entertained. They more want you to be their friend than anything else. Um, so if you are doing general music and you have the opportunity to take it here, for some reason I didn't have that opportunity, um, definitely take it. So um, you should talk to Dr. Baker. She's really good with um, class standards and objectives. She'll literally write word for help you write word for word exactly what they should look like. I think she like writes them for the choral department for California. <coughs> but if I didn't have those skills that I learned from her, like I wouldn't even know what they were. Um, but she's a really good resource on helping you write literally word for word what they need to be. It's just having an idea of what you want to teach, um, but being able to word it in the format um, that the school district wants you. Do you guys, are you guys familiar with um, the credential program? Yeah, yeah. the uh, professor took us <coughs> here two weeks ago, the last two weeks. Yeah. So, yeah. Kind of. She looks like, you know, like a whole thing, like a whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, do you mind when we turn the camera off for this one? Uh. <laughs> <laughs>